Leg of lamb can be intimidating, but it really doesn't need to be. It's not only one of the most versatile centerpieces that you can make, but it's also one of the most straightforward to cook. So I'm cooking a boneless leg of lamb today, and you can do this with a bone leg of lamb, or you can have your butcher do it, or you can buy one with a bone and take the bone out. From a cooking and flavor perspective, I like to be able to work with a boneless leg of lamb because it gives me a lot more control, and I'll show you why. So when we've got it open like this, we can put flavor inside and we can do a really tight trimming job. So as you can see, inside a leg of lamb, there's still pockets of fat. And this isn't great fat. This hard fat is not gonna add to the flavor. So we're gonna pull this out. Now, this is a grain-fed piece of American lamb that was actually sent to me by Meat and Bone as part of their program with the American Lamb Board. So thank you, Meat and Bone, and thank you, American Lamb Board. Now, I'm gonna be cooking this piece of lamb in a wood-fired oven, but you can cook this however you want. You can do it in the oven in your kitchen, you can do it in your smoker, in your Kamado grill, you can do it in your Weber. However you want to cook this, it's going to be great. It's just going to be a different flavor profile, but the core flavors here and all the ingredients are going to be the same. So what I'm going to do now is take these thicker parts and actually butterfly them out so that they will lay flat. And you're going to see what's going to start to look like one big flat piece of lamb. And I'm exposing again this hard fat. Now this is again not the good stuff. The marbling that's in here, which you can see really intently, is pronounced because it's a grain-fed animal, but that's where the good taste comes from, not from this hard stuff. With this out, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by applying salt to the lamb, and then we're gonna go get our fire started. Now when you see me make steaks, I salt overnight and I do what's called a dry brine. You don't have to do that with lamb. You can salt overnight. My experience is that lamb, especially grass-fed lamb, doesn't react that well to being exposed to the air. I think this grain-fed lamb would do better, but I don't think you need it. I think this salt, just the way that we're doing this, is gonna absorb just fine into the lamb, and this is gonna be a tender enough piece of meat that we don't need the additional benefit of the salt tenderizing. Now on the outside, what I'm gonna do here, after I get this excess fat off, I still want the fat cap on the leg, but here I'm just gonna score that fat cap. I'm just gonna cut it in a hatch pattern that's gonna allow seasonings to get into the meat of the lamb while we're cooking. And with that hatch pattern, I can salt the other side. Now this is a six pound piece of lamb. My rule of thumb with Morton's kosher salt is a teaspoon per pound, so this whole thing is gonna be about two tablespoons, about six teaspoons. So while the salt absorbs into the lamb, let's go get our oven fired up. This is Mace Windu, my Toscana wood-fired oven from La Piazza Wood Oven. So I'm gonna grab a couple of small pieces of wood and bark just to help get my fire started. So I'm gonna lay down my small pieces, kind of like kindling across the bottom. And then across here, I'm gonna lay a couple of really small splits that are gonna be easy to catch. And then a couple here that are a little bit bigger. Now, let's turn this and iron, and this is how we isolate our fire in a wood oven. We're gonna put it up against the side here, and then we're gonna light the wood, and the flame is gonna come over the top and create the heat that we want. A little bitty fire, great big flamethrower. Okay, so we've got a little fire going in here. We don't need like crazy pizza oven temperatures. We wanna cook at about 350 or 375. So what I'm gonna do is close down the flue a little bit just to control the airflow. I'm gonna open it probably a little bit more than a quarter way. And then we're gonna have air coming in through here, escaping through here, and that's gonna drive the fire. And when the fire gets to 350, 375 degrees, we're gonna be ready to cook. So I guess we better get back to prepping, huh? So we're gonna start by juicing two lemons. I like to use fresh fruit for uh, these kinds of recipes. You can use lemon juice if you feel like it, but it's so easy to just pick up a couple of lemons and just juice them. If you're just using lemon juice, you get about a tablespoon out of each lemon, so just use two tablespoons of lemon juice. So now I'm gonna strip the leaves from a couple of rosemary stalks, and then I'm gonna chop these up fine. Now I'm gonna crush a couple of cloves of garlic in here. 
I'm gonna take a little bit of powdered harissa seasoning. Now this is a seasoning blend. It's a typical Middle Eastern, think Moroccan in origin. It's got cardamom and paprika and a bunch of other fun stuff like that. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of olive oil. We're gonna add about a teaspoon, teaspoon and a half of medium ground black pepper. And then we're gonna whisk until we've got a nice cloudy paste here. Now that's gonna be our flavor profile for the outside of the lamb. Now for the inside, I managed to get a jar of this Mina Harissa. So this is a red pepper sauce made with the same Harissa flavor profile that's from that spice. So for the inside, I'm gonna spoon this red pepper Harissa mixture inside. Now this is one of those reasons why a boneless leg is superior to a bone-in leg. Now, yes, you do get some flavor transfer from the bone when you cook bone-in, and the presentation of a bone-in leg of lamb is something special, but I think you're gonna find the presentation of this is nothing to shake a stick at to get more flavor inside. But I've got this now red pepper flavor profile inside, so now we're gonna assemble this into a roast. So this process is called trussing. So what I'm gonna do is start down here at this open end, and I'm gonna roll this up and I'm gonna tie off my butcher's twine here in a butcher's knot that's over once, over twice, and pull it tight, okay? So I'm gonna make a loop. I'm gonna pass under this tied end and pull it tight. It's not gonna be pretty. Don't worry, it doesn't need to be pretty. This is gonna be the bottom of our roast, but we're just gonna keep going, passing under and then pulling tight. All right, now when I roll it over, I come back across, and I'm gonna come under and over the next, and under and over, pull this up tight. All right, so we're just gonna tie this off. All right, so I've got that red pepper harissa flavor profile inside, and now what I'm gonna do is take my rosemary harissa, and I'm gonna coat the outside. This is gonna be a delicious outer crust that will pair really well with the red pepper on the inside. So now we're gonna put this on a roast rack. This is gonna fall right into here. That's gonna keep it up off of the floor of the oven and the roasting pan that we're gonna put it in. And I've got this nice glass Pyrex roasting pan that is uh, gonna be perfect to allow us to see what's going on with our roast. That Kind of barely fits in here, but that's okay. Let's go see if that oven's ready. Okay, looks like we're up to temperature. Yes, it looks like our rack is going to fit into our oven, which I was a little worried about. Now I'm gonna track the cook with the Meter 2 Plus. I don't know if you guys have seen this yet, but this is the newest addition to the family from Meter. Now one of the things I like about the Meter 2 Plus for a case like this is that it's got five temperature sensors. So I don't have to worry about whether I've got this into a cavity or it's in meat because it's going to be able to figure out what's inside and then also this outside temperature sensor will go up to over 900 degrees 932 degrees fahrenheit which means if i'm cooking in this oven like this oven gets hot i can do a hot eight nine hundred degree cook and use the meter just fine and not have to worry about it uh overcooking so let's go ahead and put this in here i'm going to put a couple more splits of wood right here in the oven so these can dry out and warm up and preheat for when it's time to put more wood on the fire okay so let's set up our cook on our meter two plus set up cook we're going to cook lamb we're going to cook a roast we're going to cook a leg of lamb we're not cooking it all the way to pull temperature we want this thing to be about 130 degrees which is going to be a nice medium rare for slicing a leg of lamb and then all we got to do is start the cook and it will start tracking and you're going to see the ambient temperature is going to come up as I put the cover on the oven and the oven comes back up to temperature. So this should take about an hour and a half at 350 degrees in the wood fired oven. So we're going to come back in about 45 minutes, see how it's doing and probably turn it around so that the other side's exposed to the fire. So see you in 45 minutes. Okay, we're 45 minutes in. And I wanna show you something because I think we might make a change here. All right, so look at what's happening here. This wood oven is like incredibly efficient. It's got all three kinds of heat. It's got radiant heat coming off of the fire. It's got convective heat with the air coming up and over the lag of lamb. And it's got conductive heat with the heat coming up from the floor. And so you can see this outside here is cooking faster than we really want it to. 
And that's because I can't push this over because this rack is up against the side wall. So this rack ended up being a mistake. So I'm gonna make a game time decision here and we're gonna switch what we're cooking in. Let me get this out. I'm gonna slide this plancha in and now I'm really carefully gonna remove the roast. I'm using heat protective gloves here. I'm gonna remove the roast from the rack and put it on the plancha. And now I can spin this around and expose the other side, but I can put it all the way up against the side of the oven. So I think this is gonna be easier to control the cook. Don't worry, this is not burnt. It's not got a nice crispness to it. It's still gonna be good. I think we saved it, but this is gonna be a better way to go the rest of the way. So I'll put this back here for when it's time and we'll see you in about another 45 minutes, hopefully. Okay, so you can see with the meter app that we've reached 115 degrees internal, but that's not the 130 that we were shooting for, which means that the meter knows about continuation cooking. And it's telling me to remove it from the heat now, and the lamb's gonna continue cooking after we pull it off and get to 130. So let's take a look and see whether our little fix moving into the plancha solved our, uh, our cooking problem. That is a beautiful looking roast. We've got a nice crust all the way across. Doesn't look like anything's overcooked. I guess we'll find out when we get it out of here. Yeah, look at the difference. So this is when it was close to the fire. Got a little bit of a char here. And then over here, just a nice crust. So I think this was the right answer was to do it this way, but I still think that's gonna taste great. Let's get it over to the island. Oh yeah. So I'm gonna move this over here onto the meter cutting board, which has, by the way, these nice channels. So if we have any juices that run out, they're gonna be captured and uh, run right into here for a nice little gravy puddle. And now I'm just gonna tent it in foil, just a nice loose tent, just to let it continue cooking and rest gently. And I'll be back and we'll cut into it and see how we did in about 15 minutes. All right, hand it to meter. It continued to cook all the way to 130, right where it was supposed to be. I'm anticipating that we're gonna have a really nice looking roast when we get in here. So a little bit of char, nothing wrong with that. You guys ready? Should we cut here, here, here? What do you think, right here? All right. All right, that is a beautiful piece of lamb. So let me cut a couple of uh, slices here. Look at that, nice and medium rare on the bottom. Got a nice medium piece around the outside and a little bit of char. So let's, uh, let's take a taste here. Here, I'll give you this one. I'll put it right here for you. Nick, I'll give you this one. You probably want me to cut it down a little farther for you, huh? It's a little bit of a big bite. All right, this one's great. Nick's. Cheers, cheers. So good. So some observations. Definitely has a char. I like char. If you don't like char, you're gonna start it further away from the fire. The outer ring is a little bit more well done than if we'd done a reverse sear like we do a lot of roasts. So something to observe there. The inside is perfect and the taste, I can taste that wood fire. Nick, can you taste the wood fire? Oh yeah, it's fantastic. I think this is great. If you've got a wood fired oven, do it in the wood fired oven, either this way or cook it at a lower temp and sear it at the end. Hey, listen, I hope you enjoyed this recipe. If you did, check this one out next. I think you're really gonna like it, and I'll see you next time on Eat More Vegans.